So you've probably seen the recent M3 announcement that Apple just made, and you might have seen that they actually filmed that entire announcement on the iPhone 15. And if you don't know, Apple usually shoots on the Sony Venice for all their product launches. It's a gorgeous camera, but they really wanted to show off what the iPhone 15 could do. So they filmed the entire announcement on the iPhone 15. There's loads of BTS footage. You can kind of see how they do it. They use all their normal workflow, like uh, jibs, dollies, gimbals, drones, the whole works, uh, wireless, directors, monitors, everything. But what they don't talk about is the specific tools on how they accomplish that. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the basic tools that you'll need to accomplish something like that, either if you're just doing a recording or if you're even wanting to live stream with your iPhones, these are the things that you're actually gonna to need to accomplish that. Okay, so there's a few main things that you need to have to achieve what Apple is doing either for a live stream or just a recording. Here's the big one. It's the new Blackmagic app for iPhone. And if you don't know what it is, they basically released an app that enables the Pocket software or Ursa software on your phone. And you can have all manual control, manual focus, uh, lensing, FPS, shutter, everything that you would normally change on a cinema camera you have on the app and it enables clean feed out it enables follow focus it enables focus peaking everything that you would want is now in this app and that's the biggest thing that they use and you can see it in all their bts videos that they use the black magic app which is really awesome the next biggest thing that you'll need is some sort of follow focus because there's no lens attached to here you can't control your focus so you'll need something like this this is the Tilta Nucleus Nano. This is actually the first gen. The second gen one, I can't get to work, but the first gen one works, so awesome. You just have to enable Bluetooth on the Nano and then enable it in your camera settings. And then you now have manual focus control, just like you would of any other cinema camera. So that's a big deal to enable you to have that cinematic look on your iPhone and it's not just auto focusing the whole time. So that is a huge one. And then if you want to have a director's monitor like I have here or connected to your switcher, you need to get the video feed out. So I have a Teradek Bolt 750 on here. And then it's just lightning to that Teradek via HDMI right there. And if you have an iPhone 15, it would be USB-C to uh, HDMI. But in my case, I'm using the iPhone 14, so it's uh, lightning. And then I just have a simple basic V-mount plate right here with a V-mount on it that you can see right there. And then that's powering my Teradek and my Vault Focus. So now I have infinite power. The really cool thing with the Blackmagic app, again, why you have to have it is under monitor HDMI out, you can mirror your display or you can give it a clean feed. So now you can see all my information. So if it's just a director's monitor and you want all this information, it's there, but you can also enable the clean feed out, which it makes it actually usable for a broadcast or a recording. So now you can see, here's my basic cinema iPhone rig. It actually is pretty comfortable. It's all enclosed by this small rig iPhone cage. So everything bolts to that, keeps it all together, which makes it feel even more like a camera. That small rig cage lets you add lenses if you're into that, but you can just change the lenses uh, from the ultra wide to the normal to the telephoto in the app. Uh, there is a slight glitch that I found with this Tilta Follow Focus, which is if you go too fast, it might punch in, and it's not changing lenses, it's like punching in the video. Um, it does it kind of infrequently. Again, I think it's a software glitch. I haven't figured out how to change that. The advantages of the iPhone 15 would be the USB-C port. So you have USB-C recording, so you can go USB-C into an SSD to record. That's a big deal, so you can do ProRes Log. Now, from the BTS videos, they talk about how the ProRes Log and the dynamic range of the iPhone sensor is incredible, and it's just a normal workflow. Uh, they normally record in ProRes, and so recording in ProRes on your iPhone means your post workflow is exactly the same, you're just using a different camera. But you have Log, you have ProRes, you can still record ProRes with the iPhone 14, you just can't record 
log, which is the biggest bummer. But if you're just wanting to broadcast this, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not saying that I would go out and trade this cinema camera for this iPhone cinema rig. But what I am saying is that with these tools, it actually enables you to use something as simple as your iPhone, which is in your pocket, to go out and shoot epic content. So again, content is key. Use what you have. I think minus the Teradek, this isn't a very expensive rig. It's like 40 bucks for the cage, 100 bucks for the follow focus, 20 bucks for this, 100 bucks for that. Obviously the Teradek is a little bit more, but it's not very expensive to build a rig like this. You can even add handles and anything else that you want. So I'll link all of the parts that I'm using in the description, including the Apple BTS video so you can see what they were doing. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'm gonna make a quick little video showing you how to actually connect the follow focus to the camera. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. Please hit subscribe, it really helps making these videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.